Hi, my name is Grace Lee, and I'm the founder of NoteQuest app. NoteQuest is a music flashcard app designed to help boost note recognition and sight reading skills for um, not only pianists, but also expanding to other instruments as well. Now, I want to say that first and foremost, I am a musician and a piano teacher, which means this app was created by an educator for other educators and also for other music students. And you're going to see that it's not just another sight reading app, but it's an app that really has pedagogy and sequential learning in mind. All right, so a few months ago, I asked a group of piano educators this question. I asked, what are your top pain points when it comes to teaching note reading and sight reading with your students? And if you are a student watching this, this will apply to you as well as you might identify with some of these pain points. So let me share my screen with you. And I'm actually doing this on Zoom. <laughs> I'm actually having my own Zoom session by myself here. And I'm going to share my screen. And there we go. The top pain point that teachers said, and this was across the board, the most popular answer, was not enough time in the lesson. Now, I know that in a typical lesson, there's so many elements to squeeze in, right? Such as um, we have our uh, assigned repertoire that we're working on. We have anything that's related to that method series that we're using. It could be theory. There'll be some ear training, rhythm, all kinds of components that we try to squeeze in the best we can. And uh, oftentimes than not, uh, sight reading tends to take a back seat um, because of lack of time. And over week after week, and then month after month, and then even year after year, the whole cause and focus of sight reading starts to kind of dwindle and take a back seat, causing the student to not have an opportunity to specifically level up in their sight reading. Students don't practice the materials we assign sometimes. Now, you know, real life happens and um, this is a pretty typical uh, thing that you'll see is that when you assign something, especially for that student to work on, it's disappointing when it comes back uh, untouched, right? And I guess when it comes to sight reading, part of the reason for that is that they just simply don't like it. A lot of students dread sight reading, I know. And, and part of the reason I believe it's because it's not engaging and there's no feedback when they're doing the activity. So there are ways that we can overcome this and even reverse this. And I'm gonna show you this tool in just a little minute. My books and flashcards come back damaged or missing. Now, sometimes students own their own sight reading materials, whether they're books or flashcards but really oftentimes teachers hold them in their libraries. Now, um, some teachers are teaching in person, others are teaching virtually, but either way, um, when, the, when these materials are being lent out, this is just an everyday thing that can happen. And I have numerous stories of this happening with my materials. And then you have to think about replenishing and also keeping up with your inventory, right? And along that note, it's also hard to organize and track the sight reading materials for each student, right? Um, if you're a person that really likes to track progress in your students, um, it is very challenging sometimes to really keep up with this as a separate uh, skill set. And I'm going to get into uh, ways that we can really distill this to make it so much easier um, and well packaged for students to be able to do. Because the essence is, if it's not easy, then it's just not going to happen. That's the reality. Okay, ODD, Octave Displacement Disorder. Have you heard of this term? And if you haven't, chances are you probably already understand what it means. So here's a common scenario. A student is playing the middle of their piece and all of a sudden they stop and they scratch their head and they're going, wait, which C am I playing again? Which one is it? And um, there is a reason for this and it's a pretty logical reason. And that is also something that is prioritized in NoteQuest, you're gonna see. I'm seeing this complaint and uh, challenge all across the board when I see uh, social media and you know teachers Facebook posts. There are whiz on flashcards and note spellers and we, all, we have all kinds of fun coloring books and activities, but when I bring out real music, they're not able to read it. So in other words, they can accomplish, they're, they're able to fill out these workbooks and they feel very good about that. But when you give them real music, somehow there's a disconnect. 
And um, there is a reason for that as well. And I'm going to get into that, which is pretty exciting. Virtual lessons are making it even more difficult to teach beginners. Now, I know that um, for many of us who are doing virtual teaching, we've had to really kind of wreck our brains and to think of new ways of teaching the same things we used to do in person. And, you know, honestly, look at it. We're, we're all human, right? And for centuries, humans have been teaching other humans in person. And all of a sudden, um, in the last few years, and especially the past few months, right? We've been having to, we're thrust into this new zone of having to teach um, with new tools. And so um, with the right tools, I will say that I'm confident that with the, these right tools, you're able to overcome some of these barriers. All right, so having said that, I wanted to share some foundations that I strongly believe in when it comes to note recognition and sight reading. And you're gonna see how all these foundations are applied in the app. A while ago, I um, just a minute ago, I mentioned ODD, right? Octave Displacement Disorder. Now, the reason for that is um, some students are not really focused on where the pitches are, but they're just learning note names. And let me encourage you to use something we call landmark notes. I, I bet some of you teachers are already uh, subscribed to this system and that is great. But for those of you who are new to it, let me explain what they are. Landmark notes are simply a set of first pitches that a student learns when they're approaching notation at the piano. And what this does is these first set of notes really set a grounding for them to navigate to find other pitches on their own, no matter where they are in the music or no matter which piece of music they're playing. They use these landmark notes as a guided knowledge to um, train other notes on the staff. Now, if you are doing every good boy deserves fudge, for example, we call those mnemonics, right? If you are doing that, I would highly recommend you consider this landmark note system and here's why. When you use mnemonics, it's basically a multi-step system of thinking before you get to the actual pitch. So if you are going every good boy deserves and you say that it's the D that they're aiming for, that only know, the, the student only knows it is a D. It doesn't necessarily dictate which D they're playing, right? It doesn't dictate the actual location on the keyboard. And so like a foreign language where you learn, um, when you're learning the language and you think in English first, and then you have to think in Spanish or whatever language, that's sort of what mnemonics do. It creates extra steps that are unnecessary. Just go for the landmark notes and it will really cut that recognition time once you're able to get uh, familiar with these landmarks. Don't stay single for too long. Start intervals sooner than later. Now, I'm not talking about your personal life, okay? So what I'm talking about is single notes. I know many of us are very well-intentioned when we have those single note spellers or those single flashcards. And we think that we're doing um, our students a favor by really trying to drill those single notes for a long time until they get them thoroughly. Well, let me offer this to you. Um, I, would, I, I would actually ask that you start intervals sooner than later. And here's why. When students are able to recognize the relationship between pitches, and you can train that early on, then they start um, start this process of reading intervalically instead of thinking singularly with single notes. Likewise, when you have, let's say, a preschooler in you know in a preschool, and they're learning their alphabet letters, and let's say they not only learn their letters but they learn the sounds of those letters, does that mean that they know how to read? No, it does not. In order to read, they have to learn the phonetic relationships when you combine these letters into words and groups of words. So they're grouped sounds. So music reading is, is a lot the same way. Um, if you stay on single notes too long, my theory is that you could be actually um, delaying note fluency, note reading fluency. And there we go, there's my point. Sight reading involves three senses, sight, sound and touch. Now this app, NoteQuest, especially in the section called NoteFit, which I'm going to introduce you to later, integrates these three senses in the most beautiful way. And let me offer that the most effective sight readers are able to engage all three senses as they're learning pieces and as they're reading by sight. The other principle that I firmly believe in is practice consistently and imperfectly. 
If you ask someone that you know who is an expert at sight reading and you ask them this question, how did you become so good at sight reading? And almost always they're going to say pretty much the same thing. They're going to say they just did it often. They did it all the time. And so I would challenge you to do it as frequently and as consistently as possible. And NoQuest encourages consistent practice over perfection. When I say practice imperfectly, this is what I mean. When we're playing music and we're assigned music, for example, at a lesson, we have the liberty to stop and start and fix mistakes as often as we'd like until we get it right, especially when we're practicing on our own. And let me emphasize that that skill is a very separate skill than the skill that's found in sight reading. In a true sight reading practice, you're able to play through fluidly, even with missed notes, but keeping rhythm intact. And that kind of leads me to this next point that I wanna make, that I can't emphasize enough the value of having a solid foundation in rhythm and teaching rhythmic continuity to our students. And this is what I mean by play through skill. Unlike this process of learning music that I just described, we really wanna tra train our students to keep going. And this does two things. When a student is able to play through mistakes and, and keep this, um, the pulse going in the music, it allows them to have, first of all, a nice overview, a broad overview of the full piece of music. When students stop and start very frequently, they tend to have this issue of really just learning the very first, the beginning of a piece pretty well, but then they start falling apart as the music goes along. And this is a kind of a, a real barrier um, to note learning or to music learning. And so this rhythmic continuity is a very important skill. Now, let me say that I'm not saying it's all right to stop. Uh, it's not all, it's, it's all right to make mistakes all the time and just to forgive them every time. But there is a, a delicate balance between keeping accuracy going and also the ability to play through the mistakes. And especially when you come to ensemble playing or even duet playing, this is a really important skill to have. Because if you start falling apart in terms of your rhythmic um, flow, then you're going to have a problem um, playing with other people. All right. So that's another reason why sight reading could be a very important skill. And here are some benefits that we know to being able to read music skillfully. Um, you're able to learn music faster which in turn gets you more exposure to more music. And as you know, there's so much beautiful music out there and fun music out there to be explored. And, um, you know, frankly speaking, sight reading is just a very practical solution, right? To learning more music. Now, I'm not saying it's the only way to learn music. I truly believe in the skills of improvisation and, and, and playing by ear, but I'm just really going to hone in on this practical, practical skill called sight reading. Rote and reading do mix. If you are new to what is called rote teaching, um, I, I don't have time in this uh, talk to, to really expand upon how rote can really help, but rote is a method that I completely identify with and I think can be very effective, especially if you have those transfer students who are playing well by ear, but cannot read music well. When you um, mix them together in an effective way, it can be a very powerful way to learn to read music for those students. Okay, folks, so at this time you're probably asking, so what does the app look like and how do you play it? I'm gonna to get to that in just a short minute, but first I wanted to show you just how easy it is to share NoQuest in an online lesson via Zoom. In this scenario, the student doesn't have the app, but you do. However, their piano playing responds to your iPad. So that is truly something cool. Check this out. Okay, so when you first open NoQuest, this is what it looks like. And you're gonna have two main, two main entry points, note class or note fit. Note class is the section that drills notes and intervals. 
And NoteFit is the one, as you can see, uh, focuses on site reading. Note class only has one-time in-app purchases, while NoteFit is a subscription. When you first open the app up, it's going to ask for your name, and you can put that in there. And this is not a login and password, by the way, because the app doesn't have a login and password. This is merely for NoteQuest to remember the name for the purpose of scorekeeping and stats. I can change my background to any of these fun backgrounds. And let's go ahead and enter note class. Um, of the three piano modes, I'm gonna select real piano, but MIDI also is great if you want to hook up headphones like in a piano lab, or you just want your student to play silently. As soon as you get into note class, you're gonna see, do you know your landmark notes? And so this is a little quick mini tutorial flow that goes through the various landmark notes for those who are new to landmark notes or you just need to brush up. So I'm gonna click, I wanna learn and it takes you through the various landmark note groups. So you can sort of teach yourself if you're new to it. Some of the landmark note names are derived from my friend, Leela Viss, who is a brilliant piano teacher in Colorado. And uh, she named some of these because some, sometimes these generic names such as high C and low C are hard to remember for students. And so when you have specific pitch names, it makes it also more fun. Now I'm gonna play and let's select the three C's. As you can tell, I scored nine points as Colin in the level called the three seats. You can actually repeat this as often as you'd like. And so you can go through them. And you know, if this is new to a student, it's so crucial that they have a lot of repetition because that's what's going to, you know, fuse those brain connections as they're learning a new concept. All right, so it says try again. All right, so now I'm gonna go on to um, well, when, what you're going to find is when you go to Landmark Note Mix, it's going to have a combination of all of the landmarks in one drill. All right, moving on, I'm going to go to Note Class, and it should be called Note Class Pro, which is the official name of the upgrade. And it's going to give you these five levels plus two levels in Interval Selector. So let's go ahead and start with level one, and it's going to include these pitches. Now look what happens, <clears throat> excuse me, when I tap on the timer, the timer disappears. So if you're brand new to note learning or you feel that you just want a stress-free practice, then you just tap on that timer and it disappears. All right, and so now I'm gonna keep going. Now look what happens when I click hint. It gives me the letter note name. And so this is a great way if you wanna keep up with note names as you're playing the app. All right, so that is um, level one and Rising Star is going to be now an expanded uh, range from uh, low C, uh, a space C to treble C. And then when we get to level three, it's called Two Stepper and you're gonna have intervals now in that range. Now, if this is a little bit too difficult for your student just starting out, and you want a little bit more customization with your interval training, you're gonna to go to this interval section here and we call that interval selector. And you can actually have more customized exercises focused on seconds only and also thirds only. So this is what it looks like when you jump into that level. So once again, everything goes back to that basis of landmark notes. So in this exercise at the beginning, all of the exercises start with a landmark note and they're all seconds. See there, I'm just skipping through. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you the th same thing in thirds. 
Now it starts with all the thirds connected to landmark notes. And let me make an additional distinction here. About midway through each round, it's going to um, generate a pop-up and it's gonna say, now that you've completed the landmark notes, let's open up more notes. And so then after that midway point, it's going to release other notes that's, um, that launch these um, exercises. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna go into note selector and note selector is the section where you can create your own drills and your own games for practice. And it is a separate in-app purchase also available in note class. So again, once you purchase it, it's yours to keep. I'm gonna to go to create new and let's say I wanna create my own drill for A major pentascale. Ooh, I, let's say I want to do a different one. So I'm going to delete these by simply tapping the red dots again. And I want to do E major. And look how immediately they appear up there on the staff. And so really this is just about the only tool where once you play the notes on the keys, you get that immediate association with the notation. So not only is it a great drilling app, but it also creates an, a real-time learning opportunity for your student who, even if they're just playing around with it, they get to see that feedback between the keys and the staff and where the notes lie. So I think this is a very valuable educational tool in that regard. And let's say we're gonna save it. And I'm gonna name it here and it's going to be saved in your collection of drills right inside your app. So there it is, there's my E major drill. And there we go. And look what happens to the keys when I tap hint. Once again, it appears right there. So if your student's really new or they're really lost, um, no problem, they get a little hint there. Um, let me show you one more thing. So when you go into the section here, let's say I want to do an F major drill. So I'm going to be doing flats. So I'm gonna select flat at the top And there we go. So I just created my F major pentascale using flats. Okay, so the other options, there are so many options you can do really with this. You can create drills for line notes. You can do space notes. You can do um, minor scales. And the other thing you could do is if you teach a different instrument besides piano, then you can create drills that are customized for your instrument's range. And so that is a real valuable asset to some as well. So I hope you found that helpful and, you, and I also hope you'll see why it's become a go-to for a lot of students and teachers. All right, now I wanna show you from the levels menu, the upper right hand corner, you're gonna see stats. And remember we put our name in at the beginning. So this will be the stats for note class. The stats for note fit is uh, pretty different. So let's say that I'm Susie, and this is a leaderboard of every user's top scores for each level. So let's say I want to send this stat to my parent or to my teacher. So I swipe left and it generates a little email and it um, embeds that little scorecard. So this can serve as proof of your hard work. All right, so that's fun. And I believe that wraps up the note class portion of the tutorial. Let's get into NoteFit. And again, I'm gonna mention that NoteFit is a separate in-app purchase. And this is um, offered as a subscription from the App Store. And it's available as a monthly or a yearly subscription. I'm gonna choose Piano. We have a couple of levels built out for the strings and we intend on adding more. So we're gonna begin with Primer. Now what Primer offers you is four stemless pitches for directional reading. So we felt like it was really important for a beginner to start reading without stems because stems can be confusing at first to a lot of students. And again, they start with the basis of landmark notes and they come in progression to one another. So for example, level A will just have those three landmarks released and then the next set has uh, a different set and then it expands into another set. So let's show you how it looks. And I'm gonna to have to turn my iPad sideways. And this one is going to operate quite differently from note class. So now when a student sees this 
uh, exercise screen, they're going to make some mental notes first and then they're gonna play. And by the way, these are meant to be rhythmless as well. They just happen to be whole notes on the page, but it's not counting rhythm at all. So let's say the student played it and this time they feel that they want to listen to how they did. And so instead of the app saying it was right or wrong, they're gonna use their ears. So they can either listen back or they can also play along and see if it matches up. And when you do the play along version, it's sort of like having a teacher there playing with you, except the teacher doesn't have to be there. Now notice between exercise one and two, on the same pitch, we have two fingerings. We have fingering one there and then fingering three there. And that is on purpose. And, because, and that's because what we wanna do is train our students to be able to play outside of plain old C position, right? So it shows them that all of these pitches could be playing, played on any fingering. And there's other opportunities as well to try different fingering, see, such as that. All right, so it really gives them that kind of spatial awareness on the keys. Let's now go to level one. And this is gonna be four measure excerpts with mostly seconds up and down the staff. Okay, so let's say a student was playing through that and they missed a note or two. And so they might wanna try again if they wish. And then if you feel a little bit confident, then you can actually tap the screen and you're gonna get this gray overlay. And when you click start, it's gonna launch a metronome click. So I'm just playing along with the metronome. All right, so step three, let's say now you wanna check how you did against the recording. So you're going to, I'm gonna turn up the volume, I'm gonna tap listen. there you go. That's what it looks like. So in level one, it's going to be just one handed excerpts. Okay. All right. So by the time you get to level two, now it expands to also thirds. And they're mostly all in C position, I believe. I believe they all are. Okay. So now we're going to go to level three and I'll show you what that looks like. Now we've expanded to fourths and it has integration of sharps and flats. And it also takes you to some different positions around the keys. We also have some more rhythm to pay attention to with some eighths and some more rests to pay attention to. All right, and if you'll notice, there's also the integration of dynamics. And let me say one thing about dynamics. Usually in a sight reading situation, dynamics don't really take first place. And um, perhaps they still don't, but for sure I would consider them icing on the cake, so to speak. And what I mean by that is, of course, trying to achieve the right rhythm and the right pitches is pretty important. But what we're trying to do when we groom musicians is we're trying to groom musical players, people who are expressive and are able to integrate dynamics. So I felt that it was still important to include it in here because we are trying to, again, encourage musical playing, right? Not robotic playing. And so if that is an added bonus, um, I think it would serve its purpose there. Okay, so now let's go on to advanced, which is level five. And this is different in that now we introduce eight measure excerpts. And this is what it looks like. And um, what I decided to put in here are basically um, a collection of pattern-based music selections. And most of them come from actual full pieces, such as the uh, pieces written here by Paula Dreyer. Paula Dreyer is a friend of mine, and she's written a collection of rote music books called Little Gems. And if you are new to rote or you want to explore rote playing, I highly recommend you check out her resource. All right, so here we go. And this is what Belleville sounds like. Let's 
say that your student is playing this for the first time and the tempo to the click track is just too fast. So then you tap on tempo and look at that. You can move it up and down according to your preference. All right. And when you do that, it will affect um, both the click track and the listen back recording. Okay, one more thing to note real quick, on the top right hand corner, you're gonna find that little flag and you can tap on that flag if you decide this is an exercise you wanna review again at the end of the round. So you can just tap on any of the exercises you wish, or you can just tap on them in advance of your student playing and then they'll just select the ones that you selected. All right, so as you noticed, um, and I mentioned, there are pattern-based pieces and these patterns can come in the form of rhythmic patterns. They could be melodic patterns and they can also be chordal or harmonic patterns. And so instead of um, building out this resource as just a bunch of random notes on a page that don't make sense, I felt it was really a high priority for me to be able to include pattern recognition in the learning process. And so that's what you're gonna find in the app. And we're also um, optimistic, optimistic that we're going to be expanding this section with more composers works as well. And you'll see that there's, pieces from all styles and all periods. Okay, so there is uh, note fit. And now I wanna take you to uh, the stats section. And let me go ahead and mention something first. In note fit, again, as we mentioned earlier in the foundations portion, we prioritize consistent practice over perfection. And so instead of grading the performance of how a user is doing, it's really just tracking how many minutes they've been playing. So once they've been playing NoteFit for eight minutes, you're gonna get a pop-up on the screen and it will say, congrats, you earned a badge. So for every minutes of play, every eight minutes of play in one day, you earn a badge. Five badges earned in a seven day period then gets you another certificate and says you've earned top bird. And I'm gonna to try to display these on the screen for you after I record this. And when you earn top bird, that allows you to unlock a series of prizes. And so you get to choose from one of the prizes in the lineup. And they include really fantastic coloring sheets and mazes um, furnished by our friends at the Playful Piano. And, um, and there also is in the lineup for some of the older students, you can also download free sheet music for you to play and print. So one of the pieces is furnished by our friend, Dennis Alexander, the, the famous Dennis Alexander provided a piece called the, um, the Last Dance is what it's called. And there's another piece in there, uh, Paco Bell Canon Theme and Variations Arrangement, which is a really beautiful arrangement for those who are a little bit more advanced. Okay, and when you look at the stat screen, this is what it looks like. And in this display, you can see that I earned just one badge. And so I'm just starting out my five day series here. All right, so I hope that it's enough to um, give you an idea of the two sides of the app. Um, there's also, let me also note that in NoteFit, you can also use it for an array of um, fun kind of creative activities such as when you have an exercise like this in level two, I might have a student say, can you write me a harmonization of this exercise? Excuse me. And they might come up with something like that. And so it really causes them to use their theory skills as well as their creative skills and, and together in application to this. The other thing you could do is you can make a game out of it. And when Leela and I were chatting, we had a lot of kind of fun interactive ideas on how you can implement this as a group game activity or um, in a piano lab situation as well. The other thing you could do is since in level two, most of the exercises are one-handed, you can have them write a part for the other hand. So for example, they could write a right-hand part for this one. And for this one, they can either do a harmonization or they can add um, some chords to that left-hand part that fit. So this could be highly educational in ways that go way beyond just sight reading, right? All right, so I think I've really captured the essence of the app. Uh, let me now show you how the PDF flashcards look. And by the way, I wanted to mention, if you're not an Apple user, uh, there's good news because we have still PDF flashcards available that are exactly congruent with the flashcards you find in NoteFit. And here is a preview of it. This is level one. 
And as you can see, it's super easy to use. And in fact, I think I mentioned earlier that I love to do this during my virtual lessons because it makes it really easy to do. And there is level one. And let me see if I can get to um, the other levels. Here is primer. Okay. And I also wanted to share something else that's available and it's the assignment trackers and also from the NoteFit site. Um, these assignment trackers make it super easy if you like to track your students' progress in the app. And it also gives you a little reminder as to what kind of components are included in each level. There's the one for NoteFit, which is the site reading section. And here's the one for Note Class, and they come as a pair. All right, so I think I've covered quite a bit of ground today and I just wanted to close with this little quote that, it, that can, comes from Judy Van Dyke, a lovely piano teacher in Iowa. She says, NoteQuest has made sight reading fun. It's filled a gap in my teaching. It makes learning and teaching easier and more successful. Thank you for changing my students' fear of sight reading into a love of sight reading with NoteFit. And she says this in context to a student that she had who used to dread sight reading. And now that student with the coming of NoteFit um, asks for sight reading at every lesson. So I don't know about you, but I call that a big win. And I hope that you have a similar story to tell once you try NoteQuest as well. Check out our YouTube channel, which is just newly emerging. And it has a lot of um, helpful short videos on um, demos that you can see NoteQuest in action. So with that said, um, thank you for watching and please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or comments. Thanks again.